the tumor goes more deeply and medially and it goes grows towards the mediastinum right especially between the trachea and esophagus and there is recurrent laryngeal nerve you know recurrent laryngeal nerve is a branch of the vagus nerve on right side when vagus nerve is going down it gives recurrent laryngeal nerve which loops around the right subclavian artery and goes upward to supply the uh, all intrinsic muscles of the larynx except cricothyroid but the root of recurrent laryngeal nerve on the right side is different than left side on left side vagus nerve goes more deeper and down and it the left recurrent laryngeal nerve loops around aorta and then it moves upward and eventually it approaches between the groove between trachea and esophagus and reaches to the larynx and when it reaches to the larynx again same thing on the ipsilateral it will supply all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx except cricothyroid right now what we have seen we are going to the third neurological complication first was problem it was the, involving brachial plexus and symptomatology then stellate ganglion and symptomatology now we are going to the recurrent laryngeal nerve this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve here recurrent laryngeal nerve on both sides and here we have recurrent laryngeal nerve here this tumor if i show from here uh, from here actually so this tumor if it is present over here it has involved what is this brachial plexus it has involved the stellate ganglion and it has gone to the recurrent laryngeal nerve and of course ribs and vertebral are also involved now when recurrent laryngeal nerve is damaged right this is more commonly damaged in pancos tumors on the left side because it has a longer root there here it loops around right subclavian here it root uh, loops around aorta and it has a longer ascending pathway so once the recurrent laryngeal nerve is damaged right what will happen dysfunction in function of the larynx right phonation will be in problem coughing will be in problem basically vocal cords they cannot move normally they become semi paralyzed and when vocal cords are not working well or they are in paramedian position fixed and not working well then what will happen person person voice will be showing hoarseness their voice will be showing hoarseness right and this will be prolonged hoarseness right more than 2 weeks 3 weeks 1 month so persistent prolonged refractory refractory hoarseness of the voice with that if you ask the person to cough because to produce cough you need to bring the both vocal cords together and raise the pressure what is in the lungs and when pressure in the lungs become too high then suddenly you move the vocal cords open and close open and close during this air explosively comes out and cough is produced but because these do not properly close so pressure does not build so properly patient cannot cough and that cough which is somewhat hollow cough or breathy cough we call it bovine cough so these patients have problem with the speaking so they develop hoarseness they develop bo bovine cough and other thing which usually most of the doctors forget that recurrent laryngeal nerve not only supplies the motor component of the larynx intrinsic muscles it also supplies the mucosa just below the vocal cords it means sensations are lost this increases the chance of aspiration and that is why in these patients aspiration pneumonia is also common right you know your mouth is full of anaerobes anaerobes and what will happen that saliva usually you swallow and 
if larynx function is intact then saliva will not be allowed to go to the respiratory system but if your larynx is vocal cord don't approximate well epiglottis does not cover the larynx well the laryngeal dysfunction increases the chances of what aspiration pneumonia so hoarseness of voice bovine cough and more chances of aspiration pneumonia